My name is Kevin Osborne. I'm uh, with a closely affiliated department, the Lab for Physical Sciences, and I have the pleasure of uh, introducing today's speaker. Uh, this is Dr. Bulent Adele. Uh, uh, at, uh, Dr. Adele was uh, one of my professors for, uh, for all four years of undergraduate uh, coursework in physics, and it's a pleasure to, uh, to have, have him out here today. Uh, today he'll be talking about uh, not, not undergraduate coursework, but some of his other interests. Um, he's, he's had a uh, number, number of interesting positions. Some of them, uh, his education was uh, partly here at St. Andrews in Delaware nearby, which is the, the site of the Dead Poet Society movie. He studied at Georgetown, but then also at uh, some very prestigious institutes such as Princeton, the Institute for Advanced Study, UC Berkeley, and Oxford. He's always been a, a terrific lecturer, and I'm, I'm sure we'll all enjoy this. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I think this really is the premier physics department in this part of the country. was 15. He didn't have any education. And if he had been a legitimate child, chances are he would have been a notary just like his father and his grandfather and the great-grandfather before that. So it's a, it's a great break for humanity, for our species, that he was illegitimate and he didn't go into. He would have probably been a very good notary, but that's all he would have been. <laughs> I, I had sort of an ignominious beginning to my art. My father was a military attaché, a diplomat from Turkey to London, and we lived in a very fine house that my father had to rent. Uh, it had been owned by Lord Curzon. And in the house, there were all these 16th and 17th century family portraits. And the only thing I knew about Leonardo when I was eight was he used to say that the, the eyes are the windows to the soul. Well, these paintings had no soul. You could look at the faces and they didn't speak to you. But well, my family had just bought, purchased a bottle opener that made very round, perfect pupils. And I went around opening the windows and all these eyes. No one really appreciated my artwork for a few months. No one knew about it until one day uh, the, the devil, dressed as a diplomat, came to visit my father. And I heard about it later man put out his hand to shake my father's hand, but without stopping, he raised his finger and he said, what's wrong with these paintings? There are holes in the eyes. Do you have a son? He had gotten to the culprit instantly. <laughs> so, well, just about the time, uh, I, I had, in fact, I remember the day very well when this came out. It was my eighth birthday. I had just received a box full of lead soldiers painted with lead paint and uh, my father dumped these in the furnace, and about the time the paintings were restored, the furnace was replaced. So it was a terrible, terrible beginning to my art career. <laughs> but then, Kevin Osborne was very kind in mentioning that I went to St. Andrew's School, where Robin Williams' famous film, The Dead Poets Society, was filmed. Uh, because in those days, the father of a student came to give a talk on dynamic symmetry. What he had to say, he wasn't a very good lecturer, he was a terrible artist, but what he had to say was the most important thing I had ever heard, connecting mathematics and art, these things with golden ratios, Fibonacci series, etc. And it stayed with me. And through the years as I did my own art, I was always mindful of using these patterns, these symmetries that Fibonacci had discovered uh, 800 years earlier. Then it was 750 years earlier. Well, uh, I, I, when my books of art, the lithographs, were published, uh, one set were published, was published in the 1970s, and the Nixons gave a set to the Queen. I was a postdoc at Oxford at the time. A letter arrived in the Department of Theoretical Physics from the Queen with her big stamp on it, and the letter read, uh, we were enchanted by your last work. Uh, would you send us, would you be interested in doing one of these in England, a set of lithographs of historic England? I was there to do serious physics, but on weekends I would take off and do 
the, the drawings and paintings. And a couple of years later, the book was published, Oxford in the English Countryside. Uh, the Queen received her, the first five copies off the press. Uh, ambassador Annenberg, our ambassador there, gave them to her. And immediately a letter arrived again. Then I was back here in the States at the Institute for Advanced Study. A letter arrived from the Queen. It started, we were enchanted by your last work. It was a form letter. Would you be, would you be kind enough to send us a copy of your next work? <laughs> My co-author and I immediately bundled 10 papers we had done on perturbation theory for projectile. <laughs> The Queen wasn't very much impressed with theoretical physics, it turns out. She never acknowledged that and never asked for the next the sequel. Uh, the book was going to be called The Two Leonardos. And indeed, there are two Leonardos, and that's what I was going to write about, rather than the two sides of one Leonardo. It wasn't a double on, it was a double entendre, but it was the fact that there were two separate Leonardos that I was going to celebrate. Uh, the Smithsonian, I went with the Smithsonian, they were local. And halfway through the book, they called me in and they said, uh, we like the book as it's going, but it's 95% one Leonardo and only 5% the other guy. They said, can you, Leonardo da Vinci obviously was 95%. They said, can you think of a name with a, with a possessive in it? Right then, there was a book called Galileo's Daughter. Maybe some of you have seen it. David Sobel's excellent book. Uh, and Immediately I said, sure, what about Leonardo's model? That's a double entendre. It could be the portrait of the most, the most famous portrait and the woman who sat for it, or it could be uh, the modus operandi of Leonardo. And in physics, we like models. And, and Bill Phillips, who's a good friend, really liked that. He said, that's the name you have to go with, Leonardo's model. Well, the publisher liked that initially, but when it was finally finished, they called me in and they said, uh, we don't think it's going to sell with that title. I was upset. I said, everything in the book has been geared towards this modus operandi. And they said, well, what do you think of math and the Mona Lisa? I, uh, I wasn't quite sure, but they pulled out the cover. It had already been printed. They decided. <laughs> But the book has done awfully well. Uh, it's in 12 languages. In fact, there are 15 pictures up there. 13 of them belong. Uh, two of them don't. Maybe you can. <laughs> Maybe the most famous, most iconic portrait in the world. The middle in the top doesn't belong. That comes from Matt Comics. <laughs> And the other one that doesn't belong is this. It's the same as, it's a repeat. But this one belongs. That's the Polish edition of the book. And it's sort of a Picasso-like uh, Mona Lisa. Well, they know much better than we do. This is the new book. And it's uh, been declared one of 10 must-have books for the year. So they do know what to do with titles much better than authors do.